Update Night Live. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that might trigger you. So we're going to be taking a very interesting approach on the topic of demons. Now, if you have read my most recent substack, then you know the hellish yet beautiful journey that I have been on for the last couple weeks. Um, I do believe that this is still remnanting remnants of my ayahuasca ceremony with um in rhythmia and so basically i do think that um the healing that i recently just went through would have never been able to happen if it wasn't for the ayahuasca experience so if you guys have read the substack then you might have heard some of this before but i'm gonna cap catch everybody up and then from there after everybody is caught up then we are going to talk about the stuff that I didn't get to put in the article so um, as you guys know this all kind of started um, because of Brittany Bento's video so you guys over here on TikTok are probably pretty familiar with her her videos are great they go viral all the time and she's a good friend of mine as well she had posted a video, um, so around December 31st, I posted on Substack about my ex-boyfriend getting possessed. The whole story, not with like all the details of what possession is and demons are, really just my experience in that situation, um, seeing that happen to someone. The same day, Brittany records a video and then posts it on the first about her experience with demonic possession. And this was the first time I have heard someone say this so eloquently. And I've heard a lot of other people talk about similar things with different words. So just to kind of reiterate what she was talking about is she was explaining that most of the time a demon is not any type of outside source it's actually our own creation and it's our own creation because it comes from a wound so similar to kind of psychological terms of inner demons these are your demons now, this is sometimes also going to cross over in the spiritual side to stuff that's in shamanism, because in shamanism, um, they, a lot of times we'll talk about things called soul retrievals. And a soul retrieval is when basically, and these things are all kind of connected topics. And even if you remember my video after Rhythmia, even a lot of that stuff had, so this is like a very still evolving topic and I'll just go to what Brittany explained it as and then I'll go from there Brittany says that sometimes when we have a core wound deep in our childhood like this could be one of the first things that you remember this could be oh yes and like when I was in Rhythmia they talked about the soul split how when you come into this world you're whole and then something happens that all of a sudden you start to think oh I need to act this way. Now, for some people, maybe that's how they become a people pleaser. Maybe for other people, that's how they become a narcissist or a manipulator. For other people, this is how they shut themselves down emotionally. For other people, this is how they become super annoying and attention seeking because this, so all of these things, like we have wounds from when we're children that's when our soul kind of fractals off so also it lines up with the shamanism stuff because they talk about how sometimes when you go through a traumatic event you it's almost like a little tiny fractal of your soul chips off and gets stuck in like a loop and it's almost like a part of you is a ghost you know because ghosts a lot of time are echo energy so it's not actually a haunting a lot of times it's an echo of another person's consciousness so that's what's happening sometimes with our own soul so sometimes these wounds from childhood they could be something super horrifically tragic or they could really be something like when I was in Rhythmia one of the teachers talked about how when he was about four or five years old he always used to you know I mean this was before everybody had all these remotes you know back in the day you know you had to change the channel by getting up 
So his dad wanted him to get up and change the channel for him. And he had just sat down, little boy, and he's like, no, I don't want to do it. And his dad's like, oh, well, if you don't do this for me, I'm not going to do anything for you anymore. And it's just a joke. It's just a silly little thing that you say to a child. But he saw in his ayahuasca ceremony that that was what made him a people pleaser. That was what made him say, oh, wow, if I don't do what people want from me, I am not going to survive. I'm not going to be okay. I'm not going to have my needs met if I don't do what people always ask of me. And then that sets this pattern. That's a core wound. Now, that core wound, back to what Brittany was saying, is that in her example, that core wound was connected to body image. And which is very common. It's a very common wound for many women because it's literally programmed into our society to have these wounds. And also men have these wounds and then they feel even more ashamed about having them because it doesn't meet society's standards. So having body image um, wounds is very common and come in all different forms. So she had talked about that in 2013, she had done fitness competitions, which was a polar opposite of how she had seen herself previously with her body image. Then she saw herself as like, I'm a winner. I'm a, you know, body superstar. I'm t-. And then, so what that did is you can have a wound now, or let's say that wound is a tiny piece of your soul that broke off at childhood. It is a child, that part of your soul. Now, you can feed that child nourishment, love, and help it, or more likely, most likely what happens is we feed our wounds with negative validation. And in this case, you know, fitness and all of that and being a winner and competition and stuff is positive. But at what cost does someone get every single muscle in their body so defined? You know, I have a lot of friends that have done body competitions. And, you know, a lot of times they're not allowed to drink water for the last day before for 24 hours. They're not even allowed to drink water because you have to have absolutely no water weight to have everything. So like, um, even though fitness competitions are healthy, sometimes if then negative um, validation can feed that wound. Now, then she didn't really fully become aware of it until after her ayahuasca ceremony. And then that's how she was able to address it and heal it and relieve it. And I watched that and I was like, this is beautiful. This is incredible. How brave of her for putting that information out there, especially as someone who offers psychic sessions and things like that, like that is brave. And that really goes to show that her ego is in a very healthy place because, you know, not only admitting that, you know, she doesn't know everything, but also admitting like, oh, look, and this was kind of happening with me. And this is how I worked on it and being honest. So then as you guys probably know, if you li listen to the Substack or read the Substack, um, then I did this meditation about a week or so later. And in this meditation, I it was like a bad trip. And I felt like all of these things from Britney's video, like kind of like in my mind, it felt like bad mushroom trip or something. And it was like, oh my God, I didn't even realize, oh, thanks for this um, galaxy gift over here. Thanks, Mark. Um, so I did not... Um, even think like when I watched Britney's video, I didn't think like, oh, that's me. I was like, wow, that's so brave of her. And then when I was in that meditation, which was actually a Mark Serto meditation, the guy who um, worked on the original Gateway experience from, um, he was Robert Monroe's best friend and I did an interview with him. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you should go watch the interview on my YouTube, it's really good. But he also created, you know, he worked on the original Hemisync technology with the CIA. So this guy's Hemisync Beats, oh, thanks Drea for the gift. Um, his Hemisync Beats, really transported me into another time and place and space and everything. And I kind of went to like this underbelly and it was like kind of just thinking, sorry, I, I burped, but now I have a mic. So you probably heard it, even though I tried to hide it. Um, but basically then this is what led to then the Conscious Life Expo, which is what I talked about a little bit last week too, or 
week before where this kid I look at his eyes. This woman's like, oh, this kid's got healer's eyes. I think this kid's just socially awkward or weird or something. And then I look into his eyes and I'm like, oh, my God. What the, f- <laughs> what the heck, <laughs> kid? Um, mm. Thanks for all the gifts, guys, over on TikTok. Um, so that was when I saw that there was a creature When he was staring into my eyes, I got an image in my head from a third person perspective of me and him standing there where we were, but on my left side was a giant creature, Um, like a reptilian looking creature, feminine, wrathful, militant, uh, angry, towering, scary energy. Now, I didn't feel like I was under attack or anything when it was there, even though I was I really felt exposed, like he was reading me without permission, Um, but it was all part of this plan that needed to happen, obviously. So then, as you know, in the Substack, this spiraled a lot of stuff. This spiraled, like, on the drive home. Now, of course, I went to dinner after, and I went and stopped somewhere else after. There's all a lot more details in the Substack of really kind of the unraveling of it all, but... Then I just start kind of like pouring out all of these like core wounds and I'm like, oh my God, everything. Now I've heard other people describe the same thing that Brittany described without using the word demon. Now Joe Dispenza talks about something very similar. Joe Dispenza talks about how our personality is just an accumulation of circumstances and events is just a series of events that now all of these things have happened. And now we believe this is our personality, but in reality, this is just a lot of times. So then this started bringing up all these things. Thank you for the gifts guys. So this started bringing up all of those things in me where I was like, remembering like that I like, my first time trying to like ride a bike and how basically like all of this stuff. And I pour that all out in the sub stack, you know, things to like small embarrassments, honestly, that have made such an impact in my life. Like I saw myself as someone like, Oh, I'm not musically inclined or I'm not a good singer. I'm not a good dancer. Um, I'm not good at sports or things like that. And it was like all pouring on me that night that I was like, oh, my God, all of these things that I think I am good at or not good at, but especially the things that I think I'm not good at. This is literally me just trying to prevent myself from feeling embarrassed or hurt or rejected. Like, that's how crazy it is. So Brittany will talk about it, saying that this is, you know, like a demon. In the spiritual description, Joe Dispenza talks about it in a very practical way that this is a personality. A personality is not what we believe personalities are. It's a series of events. It's a series of circumstances that turn into beliefs, that turn into habits, that turn into patterns, that eventually become what we identify ourselves with. And I was looking at myself and being like, and I mean, it was all flooding in on me that night. And also being at the Conscious Life Expo, as I've said before, you're with all different types of healers and activators and stuff. So the energy is intense. But I was feeling like, damn, what really is me? Of course, I know who I am. But how much of what I am and who I see myself as and what I like, what I don't like, things I do, things I don't do, really just originates with some dumb moment from childhood that really didn't even matter, that I barely even remember or think about, that changed the course of my life. Like, you know, in the Substack, I talk about my best friend was a really uh, good singer growing up. So she was in the choir. I joined the choir with her. And then she tried out for a solo. So I tried out for a solo with her. Um, and I just completely bombed. There was only like four people in the room. And two of them were my good friends. One was the teacher. And the other one was some kid that was in love with me. So it was not that horrible of a crowd. I wasn't at Madison Square Garden. I wasn't 
oh, I wasn't that girl in the Lady Gaga video. But that's what I sounded like. I sounded like the girl in that Lady Gaga video. That's why I laugh so hard that I cry at that video when she's like, stay. That's what I sounded like. <laughs> but even something that I can joke about and like, is not that big of a deal now. I'm like, oh, wow. But how many times in my life has this prevented me from taking a little something or doing a little something for fear of embarrassment or fear of not being good at something the first fucking time I try it? And like really reflecting on this stuff. Now, Teal Swan, whether you guys are um, a fan of her or not, I don't know how I feel. I mean, sometimes I watch stuff I really like. Um, so... Teal Swan has described this same thing in a very different context, and that's why I want to share that with you. So she talks about the self-projector, I mean, sorry, self-protector and the rejector. The self-protector is part of this thing. So now this wound, like any of us have, say um, you didn't have friends growing up or you felt like you didn't have enough friends growing up. So now you see yourself as an introverted person. You see yourself as someone who's not very social. You see yourself as someone who, I mean, I don't really like parties. I hate social settings. I hate crowds. I don't like those things. It's too stressful. And then this is what you see as your personality. You identify, I'm introverted. I'm all of these things, you know. But at the end of the day, is it because that is actually a personality or is this because there is this self-protector slash self-rejector inside of you. So now instead of being hurt by not having anyone to hang out with or not feeling like you have friends, you avoid those things. You avoid those situations. So this is where the protector who's like, oh, no, 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 we're not going to get hurt ever again. So we're not going to put ourselves in social sittings to get hurt. But then... That very rejector prevents you from being in the place that you need to be to actually break that cycle and actually meet people and make friends and connect with them and retell this story that you're telling yourself. So that protector is preventing you from being hurt. And it's also the first to reject you. So you think you're going to go out and you're like, what if someone rejects me? Okay, I'll reject myself first by not going at all. Now, Sure, if that really is who you are, if that is really your identity, if that if that identity you want to hold on to, okay. However, what if you evaluated these things that we identify with and say, what is the real purpose behind it? Like another one that has come up for me um, since of things to kind of that I identify with that I need to break. Um, you know, I haven't eaten meat in 13 years. And on my way to this healing, because I knew what was going to happen, because I had been breaking down a lot of this stuff. And I'm going to tell you guys about what happened in the healing with Chelsea, because it was insane, 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 insane. We both saw the same shit in our heads. I'm still blown away by what happened. And I have some notes, but I don't even think without her describing it all that I'll be able to say exactly what happened in that session. But so on my way to the healing on Thursday... Um, to now integrate this thing or banish this thing or heal it or send it away. I don't know what I need to do. I just know that there was like a freaking like eight foot reptilian on my left side. And I was sitting with it for like two weeks because I had so much shit going on and my calendar was so full and so was my friend's calendar. So I felt for two weeks like I was sitting with this thing in hospice. Like I felt like it was like my demon was dying for two weeks and I was with it. And um, I'm sure you guys have seen of anything that I posted in the last since the Conscious Life Expo. I was struggling um, energetically, um, mostly energetically and sadness, sadness. I had a lot of sadness because just kind of seeing all of these little things that impacted my life, of course they're sad um, because, you know, that's my childhood self that experienced those things. But then at the same time, what's even more sad is how much I have, and I've lived a very good life and I've lived a very exciting life. Good in the sense of like, it would make a good movie, not good in the sense of like, it was easy, but um, 
and overall, you know, it was exciting. So not that I have any regrets of it, but I was just like kind of reliving a lot of things, which is points where my soul kind of fractaled off. And that's like, so when you have a soul split, some people have one and then it continues to happen. And then sometimes those wounds that become the demon, demon, they, um, sometimes we'll start to take over the personality like Joe Dispenza describes or like Teal Swan describes that um, someone said that on something, they commented on the Substack saying that Eckhart Tolle talks about that as well, um, which I haven't really, I haven't read that book. I know I haven't read that New Earth book. I'm, isn't it crazy? But so reflecting on all of these different things and what has motivated a lot of my own actions. Oh, right. Sorry. I'm all over the place. When I was on my way to the healing, the intuitive message that I got was that I, uh, need to eat meat, not for my health because I do eat a little bit of fish and I do have a pretty diverse diet. You know, I don't eat super strict, you know? Um, but it was saying that I need to eat some meat, not for my health, for my identity, for the health of my identity. And now you guys know how much I love cows. I don't think I could eat any steak. I would literally cry if I ate a steak. I don't think I could do that. I mean, I just, I love cows too much. I don't think I could do it, but, um, I will have, I will have a slice of pepperoni pizza. I don't know when, but I will. Because you know what? I have, that's the only thing that I ever crave that is meat. The only thing that I'm ever like, damn, oh, I wish I could have a pepperoni slice with just a little, you know, it creates a little bowl. Like when it gets hot, the sides of the pepperoni come up and then it creates a little bowl of oil. That's what I would like. Even though, I mean, the worst thing to eat is pork, right? If I was going to go and eat any meat, um... But that's what I'm saying is it's like, who cares? This is coming from like other things. And I'm identifying myself from what? Because I was traumatized by the movie Food Inc. That shit was traumatizing. But I like took a part of that with me. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, it became part of my identity, you know, and I feel good about not eating meat and I'm not going to like going to go full carnivore or anything. But I think just simply on principle, I think I'm going to have a pepperoni slice after 13 years and uh, go from there. <laughs> Need that spice. Exactly. The little the little flavor, you know, the fake pepperonis, they don't have the flavor because the flavor is coming from the pork. Um, so those are just like some things that are like, you know, this could be sparking up some stuff in you of kind of like, oh, damn, I've always hated this. But why do I actually hate this? Is this connected to something that like actually like embarrassed or hurt or scared me as a kid? And how much like are we trying to protect ourselves in our day to day life? Like for me, I basically am someone who like limited a lot of my emotions, but that also limits a lot of your happy emotions too. Like, thank God I smoked weed for all those years because, um, you know, I, I really cut off a lot of emotions and that cuts off a certain level of happiness too. And I'm looking back and I'm being like, okay, well, all of this has impacted my perception of the world. Like this demon, this self protector, this self rejector, this personality, these likes and dislikes that are all coping mechanisms tied on top of each other. All of that, like, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm ready to be a whole new person, whatever that means. And if that means, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to create the person. I'm going to let this unfold. So there's a lot more information in the Substack. If you guys want to hear all the details um, and all of the different things, I wrote a letter to it, all of that. Now, if the Substack or this is triggering stuff in you and you're kind of like, oh shit, 
I think I have a part of my inner child that has been wounded and is fractaled away somewhere and you want to retrieve it back or help it back or maybe it's not fractaled away and you just feel that this core wound is coming up. As you're hearing this, you might have some core wound stuff coming up. Um, Last year, one of the events that I did online was an inner child hypnosis. So I posted that on my sub stack. It's for free for all subscribers um, because I can't leave you guys hanging. You know, I know I'm grateful that in my situation, of course, I always have dramatic situations because that's just I'm a Leo. It's dramatic. And um, I also think that my experience was dramatic to share with people and spark this in other people the same way that Britney's was even, you know, more dramatic than mine in a way because her story was meant to awaken stuff in people. So it definitely awoke something in me, that's for sure. And so not everybody has access to, you know, my best friend, Chelsea. Thankfully, she's a shaman and an integrative healer. So she actually knows exactly what to do and she does soul retrievals and she works in the astral and she knows how to deal with entities and demons and stuff. So I was lucky that I had her available to me. Now the inner child hypnosis that I have on my sub stack, it's not a soul retrieval. It's an inner child healing. So it's not going to be the same thing that Chelsea was able to do for me, but it could be helpful for anyone that is having that stuff stirring up. Um, oh, thank you, gravity. So let's talk about the healing. So I go over to Chelsea's house and she has me on a heated massage table, which was super cozy. She had me under a red light. She put a weighted eye mask on me. She put a heated and weighted chakra pillow on me with crystals in it and you know she had done some grid work on the bed she did all of these different things preparation for me getting there then a little bit of energy stuff on top of my body before she started now the only time I've ever worked with a shaman in this way um or the only time I've ever worked with a shaman was on the ayahuasca so I've never worked in any type of shamanic healing without um, plant medicine. This was just a completely, you know, sober experience. And so I didn't know what to fully expect because I didn't know what this healing entails. I trusted that Chelsea has the abilities and I know, because also when I was on the ayahuasca, it showed me her in her true form and her true form was this gigantic, uh, geometric lotus thing it was like made of jewels and it kept unfolding unfolding and I was like oh my god and I was like wow Chelsea doesn't even know what she is she's this lotus creature and um so when I was laying on her bed I was on the massage table I was like okay I know that I trust her wholeheartedly I trust her to do this I trust her abilities I know that she's gifted I don't know what to expect here but okay I'm just gonna fully give into this situation clear my mind and then I hear Chelsea go over to the couch and sit down and she says she's gonna go into a trance now and she'll find me on the other side and I was like oh oh okay so this is how this works and for like one second, I was like, oh, I wonder if we're, if what I'm going to see or whatever. Um, so it was interesting is she said right before she got sat down, she was calling in, you know, guides, guides, protection, um, spirit animals, things like that. And when she said spirit animals, I saw in my head a giant mantis. Then she says she goes over to the table to the couch and she says she's going to go into a trance and she'll find me on the other side. Now, what's so funny is sk- without skipping around too much, because what I experienced and what Chelsea experienced, what's so funny is she said the second that she got on the couch and closed her eyes to go to into a trance, she said a giant mantis being popped up. <laughs> 
Now, what's funny is the way I saw the mantis was it was a complete black void. It was totally black, um, like the area. And then it was a green mantis, but it was basically kind of mostly hidden by shadow. So it was like mostly in the shadow and green. So, and he was just like kind of zoomed in and Chelsea said that, um, he was purple and like iridescent and glistening and that he was coming out of kind of like this magical type of, she said it was a cave, but the cave was not dark. It was an illuminated cave. And then he came out and it was this kind of like, um, a whimsical grassy thing. So it was very interesting that there was a lot of things that we both saw, but we saw them in different ways and it makes sense because we were also operating from different places too. So I have notes for what Chelsea experienced. So first thing popped in was the mantis and she said it was like very, um, whimsical and also like very like friendly. She said the mantis was kind of like, Oh, Hey, like it's you uh, she said it was just like very jovial and sweet like mine was just like looked like no no um you know all business then she said these celestial type of beings came in uh and of course this is very abridged what she saw was a lot of different things um with details and all of that stuff and Then she saw four timekeeper beings that um, these beings are like keepers of time. And four of them came and started going through all different timelines. And basically she said that um, she's done this. So this is like partly a soul retrieval. It's more than a soul retrieval because she, there was a lot of stuff done, but so like the soul retrieval is like those little fractals get, broken off because of trauma because of um all different types of things and basically you kind of part of your soul is kind of stuck in a loop and what's interesting is the first time I did mushrooms after like 10 years I did them once in like I don't know like 2010 or something and then I did them again in 2020 and I saw I was in Joshua Tree and when I was I was walking back to the Airbnb I saw on the sides of my eyes like it was like the National Museum of History um you know like the one in New York like the big famous one and but all of the exhibits were moments of my life they were all little parts of my life stuck on repeat playing on loop and so I remember thinking like oh they're all just stories it's okay they're all stories it's only stories that was the first time I did mushrooms I didn't really understand what soul retrieval was at that time now I understand that a lot of those fractals were things that kind of like were almost parts of myself that are kind of stuck in time in a way so to speak and parts of my soul are were stuck in time in traumatic events so these So Chelsea said that usually when she does a soul retrieval, it a lot of times go back to the core wound and do most of the work there. And a lot of it will kind of heal from that aspect. Um, She said with this, it was like so many fractals. She said, usually you get um, a couple. She was like, this was like countless, countless, countless soul fractals. And they was going through all these different timelines and taking different parts from my life and merging them back into my soul. And there were, they were repairing stuff in the timelines and they were also planting seeds. So they were working with her to plant seeds in these other timelines where they were retrieving the soul. They were planting healing seeds for something new to be able to be grown from them. And of course, you know, this is dealing with the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is also speaking in symbolism at all times. Always, you know, so things like that going in the timelines and planting seeds. Sometimes our mind is showing us these things um, for what they mean, you know. And then that's, that's when they, when Chelsea 
um, was like, okay, well, I'm here for this, like, demon, basically. I'm here for this, like, whatever the hell it was that Jen saw the other day. You know, she's like, and, like, I need to see this shit. Like, show me this demon. She's like, I need to see it if I'm going to deal with it. And I, she's like, I need to know what I'm working with and I need to know what I'm working against. And she was like, you know, she's like, she came in like, I'm ready to fucking fight. And she's brought to the place and it was not at all what she expected. Now I'm going to go back to my experience and then we'll catch back up with what happened with Chelsea. So she puts the thing over my eyes. She says she's going into a trance and that she's going to meet me on the other side. I think for one second, like, hmm, I wonder if this is going to work. And then instantly I am in a room, a white room, kind of like, kind of like an insane asylum, asylum, kind of like a quarantined room, kind of like a basement in like an experiment or something, a, a casted away quarantined place. And this was literally one second after I'm like, Oh, is this going to work? And then I'm like, Oh, I'm in this all white room, but it's not really bright. Even though it's all white, it's still dark. It's still at the same time, like an abyss. And there's a child there in the corner. And this child is, staring at the corner sitting down and it's so small like a toddler and I just start crying because I know that it's me you know I know that it's myself as a child as a toddler and um I like kind of approach it and it goes crazy like freaking absolutely just vicious this thing is like, like a demon. It's just a baby, you know, um, it's freaking, and I saw it, it showed, it showed me from being a baby and it growing from like, you know, five years old, seven years old, nine, 10, 11. And then at 12 years old, it stops at 12 years old. And it's, got like the haircut and stuff that I had and it looks like me but then the face is like this monster this demon and it's <laughs> this thing is freaking this thing is evil and you know like I said even with the ayahuasca there's no such thing as really evil it's wounded it's God's children being so wounded that they literally embody complete negativity, that it is literally safer for them to embody complete darkness and complete negativity than it is for them to be in the opposite. So then um, I'm kind of with this thing in this room and it's now kind of like a dark room and Chelsea, I see her in like the corner in the back room and I'm talking to it and then um I have to bring my they or whatever my dad comes in so then my dad comes in and we kind of have and this thing like freaking loses it this thing just goes insane at my sight of my dad freaking up the walls lashing out and uh Basically, though, it comes to a neutral place where it's like my dad is the same wound. It's the same demon. It's the same thing. It was like being raised by one of these things. You know, it wasn't anything to hold against someone anymore at this point, you know. So then other people are brought. My best friend from high school and then my best friend from after high school, um, both of which I was really close with for like eight years. And we had similar falling outs with both of them. Um, so both of them came and basically kind of showed me that like their demon is intertwined with my demon and that like kind of part of the making of my personality was also influenced by like their demon, you know? And then we 
finished up and then they left and then two of my ex-boyfriends came forward which is interesting because they were both born on the same day and I was like oh huh, why did you guys come forward together? You have the same birthday. So then I start trying to think of other people's birthday and I'm like, are they going in order? And my mind was like, stop, like stop right now, go with it. And basically the same thing showing me that, um, the one guy, it was his family's culture that caused this wound in him. The other guy, it was his, his ethnicity that was always, a wound for him and like I'm saying it's not that there's something wrong with the original thing that caused the wound it's something that causes a child to no longer feel whole something happens that causes the child to fractal off and it didn't show me what these people's moments were but it showed me like kind of what it showed me like what the wound was that caused it to be that way and like one guy that I dated that was like a con artist or whatever, it was basically just like he literally f never felt safe in his skin. And he ended up kind of doing whatever he had to do to survive and had to create almost a whole indifferent fake identity just to, um, you know, that was that self self protector a self-rejector, the personality, the demon, all of these different words that we can use for the same thing. It's a wound that gets fed with the wrong things along the way, and it eventually becomes strong enough that it takes over the character, it takes over the personality, and then we think it's who we are. And because it is part of us, we're operating on that level, but we can live much more than that. Like, sure, I can go the rest of my life thinking... I'm bad at music. I'm bad at dancing. I'm good at a lot. I'm good at a lot of things. I'm still a Leo. <laughs> Let's nobody get this confused here. I'm still a Leo. Okay. Um, I'm just being honest here. We're just in my scorpionic, um, darkness energy. Um, but I could go the rest of my life being like, I'm not good at these things and then avoiding them because of the embarrassment of not being good at something. Or I could just be like, Oh, who fucking cares? So what I did today, actually, I'm not going to play it for you, but I made a song and this was part of my healing. Um, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me play a little. Let me play a little. Let me see if it'll work. If not, it won't. Oh, huh. Huh. Uh. let's see if it'll work. If not, it won't. The song is called What is Hell? Okay, hold on. Let me see. What is hell? It is the experience of the worst possible outcome of your choices, decisions, and creations. It is the natural consequence of any thought which denies me or says no to who... <laughs> okay. So, wait, I lost you guys. Where is it? Okay. So, I just made uh, some beats and I read from Conversations with God. Um, so, oh, hey, Evan, how are you? I got to send you the song because I was like, I got to send it to my musician friends first. Um, but I basically just read some excerpts from conversations with God about like how hell is not real and that basically the concept of hell comes from being not true to yourself and so I was like all right yes I'm gonna and it's like you know whatever I'm not gonna become uh you know I don't know I can't even think of a famous or successful musician at this moment but it was just like you know what just pull that band-aid off make something it's like that the Pablo Picasso quote where they say um to silence the voice to silence the voice in you that tells you you cannot paint you must paint something like that so you know um is music my calling is music my passion no but um just with those things it's like 
Oh my God, the three of us should start a band. Okay, yes, but I don't know how to play any instruments, but we'll see. Well, I, I have a xylophone, so um, Chelsea can play so many instruments, and we need her husband too because he is a full blown composer. Like I want him to like remix my song and it, like do it really good. But um, just these are the things that you know. It's like these are the ways to overcome that stuff. And it's like, I want to live the fullest life that I can live. Joe Dispenza says by 35 years old, most people are the person that they're going to be for the rest of their life. And even though I'm happy with myself, this wouldn't be enough for the rest of my life. You know, this would not be enough. I would want to live more, be happier. And all of these things too. I'm also not going to have the type of relationships that I want, you know, romantically with this thing that is the self-protector, self-rejector. So this protector prevents me from being emotionally available in a lot of relationships. So it makes me emotionally unavailable, but then that perpetuates the very problem that is causing that wound and then causes more because it's not like this is just one core wound that wound causes more wounds because now say okay because of that wound it made me emotionally unavailable well now I date someone who is also probably emotionally unavailable and then that person cheats or sabotages or ruins the relationship which then causes another wound which reinforces the very thing that you were trying to protect against so protecting you actually most of the time causes you to continue to have that problem. Like the example of someone who feels like they don't have enough friends. Then the protector says, stay home, isolate. Don't, don't talk to those people. Just go home, be alone, perpetuating the very same problem and causing even more pain. That's why this thing needs to be addressed because it causes more and more and more and more wounds. It leads to self-fulfilling prophecies. So let's get back to what Chelsea saw. So Chelsea goes, they, she wants to see this demon and you know, she's under the impression of what I saw was this reptilian thing on my side. So she's expecting like, all right, I'm going to fuck this thing up. And she goes, they bring her to the quarantined room and she sees that it's a baby, that it's me as a baby. And, but it's like a demon and she just loses it. She starts crying. And I did hear her during my meditation, like cry a little. So... She starts crying and then she says her guides kind of all came in like, no, 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 you cannot, you need to hold your emotions together right now. And she said, you know, she's seen a lot of things in these healings. One, she said, not usually does she deal with this many types of beings in one healing and not these same types of be beings as she used to. But also she went in like, I'm going to kill this thing and then comes in and it's a baby and she's like oh my god like what do I do and you know she's trying to come up with other solutions of what to do you know obviously with the help of all of these the whole team and everything and her own team and my spirit team like you know but they were kind of working her through the different things and you know she was like okay well release it and the thing is like please don't please don't release me. I'm fucking terrified. Uh, and like that fractal of my soul is like, please don't let me leave. I'm going to be lost in the abyss forever. And I'm never going to find my way back. And so she's like, well, I don't know what. To so she's kind of like looking for other things because she wants to heal this thing. But then, like she said, there was so many soul fractals. So then they're going through different, still going through timelines, trying to heal this thing to where eventually um, it was getting smaller. So as she was working with it and they were working with like the different um, areas that this has affected in my life and stuff, she said that it was like shrinking and becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And 
you know, she knew that she had to integrate it back, but she didn't want it to be taking up as much of a space as it had been taking in my life. And this is why I'm saying like, I really thought I would be one type of person who did not have this going on because I've been doing like self-help work. Literally, I read a book on narcissism when I was 13 years old. Like I've been doing self-help work for so long that for me to have had this happening right under and what it was is that this was so in my fundamental thing. So Chelsea tries to merge this back to when it originally split. And we kept going back and back and back and back and back and back. And she said, she was like, oh, this before you were born. And I was like, I know. I've said that. I've said that. I've known since I was a kid that this like wound, when, even when in Rhythmia they were talking about the soul split, I was like, I know that it had to happen before I was even born. And so she said that there was, it was all the way back to conception. And then other beings um, were assisting in this. And she said there was a purple being. And then this thing um, emerged back to me and it turned into a deer, a baby fawn, a little fawn. And um, basically was telling me that like this is reintegrated, but it is like a, a complete baby now. Like it is completely brand new and it needs to be nurtured. And, you know, that's for me to do ongoing. So then she says there was a purple being. There was then this whole purple rose thing where then I was inside. And her stuff was all whimsical. Mine was like dark abyss and dark waters and like people coming forward and like weird stuff. But for her, it was like whimsical places, temples, um, you know, all types of magical places. So then she said that there was like, I was inside of a giant purple rose and then I in my heart started sprouting purple roses and then a purple light merged with me. Then now this is funny is the hours before the healing, when I was in the shower, I was like, please mother Aya be with me today because the ayahuasca is, I know the reason why I was able to, um, why I was able to even get here. So I was like, please, Mother Aya, finish some of the work that you started six months ago. You know, assist my friend. I need you today. And what's crazy is that then from that purple rose, a giant snake, gigantic snake underground has me and Chelsea on the back of it. And it's bringing us to meet mother Gaia the earth the spirit of the earth so this snake starts bringing us down to meet the spirit of mother earth and what was funny is she was like oh it was a giant snake and I was like oh it was mother Aya because the spirit of mother ayahuasca is a giant serpent so um she took us to this like to meet with the spirit of the or of, of the earth and Chelsea said so one of the things that I talked about in the Substack, and I did talk about also in my ayahuasca experience is that after I had that like ego death you know it was beyond an ego death I literally ceased to exist I forgot that I was Jen and because my consciousness creates Jen she was not created I did, <laughs> she was not to be created by anything because no consciousness remembered that she existed and so I when I first came back from that experience, that was on the fourth night on the Yahe, when I touched the grass to, when I touched the grass, I um, was like, oh, the reason that I don't like nature, the reason I don't like camping or getting dirty or muddy or sandy or all of these different things going in waters and all of this stuff, the reason I don't like nature is because on a deep level, I feel unworthy of Mother Earth's greatness. And I would never have thought of that. I would have never seen that. I see myself as a city person. I just don't like that type of stuff. I don't like getting dirty. I don't like getting messy. I'm a city person. These are personalities. This is the protector. This is the rejector. This is the demons. These are all of these things talking because it was at that moment when there was almost nothing. I had just come back into my consciousness. I had barely remembered myself. It was one of the first thoughts when I touched the grass. I was like, oh, wow. 
I can't believe it's because I don't feel worthy of it. Now that all unravels to where I'm at now, where I'm like, oh, these things, these likes and dislikes are a lot of times not our personality. It's not just because I'm a city person. It's because when I was younger and ever anyone did anything nice for me, there was a fucking fight in my family about it. So whenever I got to go to places outside of the city, it usually involves some gigantic some family drama or something that then made me want to avoid those situations being like, Oh no, screw it. I'm not even going to go. It's going to cause issues for me to go, you know? So like those are, that's why. So it's like Chelsea wanted, Chelsea wanted to bring me to, um, mother Aya and to mother Gaia to be able to figure out why. So she has me and she says that she's like wrapping me in like leaves and stuff. Mother, Mother Gaia, the, the planet is wrapping me in leaves. And she says, Chelsea asks her, why does she feel unworthy of your greatness? And Mother Gaia, Mother Earth says, oh, because she forgot that she is me. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. So then I was, she was shown, uh, then she saw the deer again, you know, which was me, which is now that soul fractal. And then there was a spider as well, which was kind of like a protector spirit of mine, which, um, (laughs) what I tell you, don't kill those spiders. Um, because the spiders, I mean, they're very majestic beings. So I've always believed that because I'm Irish, that you're not allowed to kill spiders because it'll cancel your Irish luck. So uh, I was not surprised that she said that the spider came through. So then at the very end, then she says that um, I ask, like, as we're as she's wrapping up that I'm like, okay, well, what about love and relationships is this something I can achieve in this life or should I just stop wasting my time should I just I'll just move on if if it's not gonna just tell me now I'll just move on and just fucking be happy um and not wonder and um so she then basically comes to like a temple and she calls in which is like the goddess Aphrodite or the goddess Venus and calls in this like portal of love energy. And she said it was like a spiral going and basically was told that like, at this point I can call in, um, whatever I would like and I could have whatever I would like. And, um, but I need to be honest about wanting it. And if I do want it, I can pull it in, but I need to be honest and clear about it. And, um, you know, and before I was not because I wasn't even sure if I really wanted a relationship because of all the protector, the rejector, the wounds, the repeated wounds, the wounds that caused me to get more wounds. And then the wounds that were wounded on top of those wounds, you know, which is exactly why. So, um, Then that closes up and I hear, okay, so then throughout Chelsea is seeing all this stuff throughout this whole portion of the hypnosis, I mean, of the med, the healing, what I'm seeing is I'm in a black abyss void, dark waters, dark everything. And I'm like suspended floating in the center on my back. And I'm seeing from third per- from first person perspective out of my eyes and at the same time, third person perspective. And I'm in the center of this dark abyss and these white veiled beings, they were like almost like not angelic. They were not. Oh, Emma, thank you for the super chat. Um, They were not really angelic beings. So basically, I'm laying on nothing. I'm suspended in the air. And going through my body, it's like um, vacuuming out 
dark spots and tense spots and darkness and like looked like the black goo like you know the black goo conspiracy and you know like the graphene oxide stuff oh thank you so much emma for a sweet super chat um so the black goo the graphene oxide stuff you know the stuff from jennifer's body the movie that black goo shit it was kind of like coming out like they were sucking it was something was sucking it out of me and going down and then it got to like here to like my collarbones and I felt like stuck and then it felt kind of like resistance here and then it continued down and then it seemed like then the method was changed it was like they were vacuuming and then when they got here I got like cut open but not like viciously cut I was just opened and it was like a giant black tar kind of like a seed or something but like this weird thing and it was kind of like in three parts so it was like around the chest around the stomach and around the sacral and it was like kind of like had like three sections and it was in the center of my thing and it was like almost like trying to come like they were try something was trying to get it out and now these white beings are going around me and they have these white veils and they're grabbing all of the the black goo stuff and they're like kind of moving around and grabbing the black goo from underneath and when it's getting sucked out but they're like very like fluid and then um they're trying to like get this black thing out of my like I felt like something was trying to get it out but they were kind of dancing around me just taking like the scraps and then um then something kind of like slices me and a lot comes out and then I hear Chelsea closing up the space she has already finished her meditation side she is now I hear her closing up the space finishing out things she's now standing over me saying her last words before this is over and I saw this being like if I'm laying on my back oh thanks roots thank you for the um super chat so then this being which looks like those other things but the other things are like etheric oh actually right before that all of these beings there was like 10 of them or more and they were like had the white veils they threw like the 10 white veils over me and then pulled them off one by one and it was like they were like clearing all of these different perceptions in my life that I have developed from these false beliefs and then so then that end part and I hear Chelsea closing up the space and it's like the very last seconds and I'm like oh wow and then this white creature jumps on top of me and it looks similar to these other things but it's made of like stone it looks like it's kind of like a virgin mary statue but kind of like all white and a little bit monster creepy but like not evil or bad feeling at all and i knew it was safe because i knew that everything that can come into the space was only safe um because you know chelsea freaking held it down in the astral so i knew as she was closing up the space that you know this was it was crazy she it was like one two seconds left of the session this being jumps right like on top of me and it looks like a hardened version of the other beings and it tells me can i have it meaning like i guess this like kind of black tar thing that's inside of me and I don't know what to do I don't know whether to say and it's like I was like I guess I mean like kind of what does Chelsea think and he was like well I need you to answer and I was like uh okay yes and then literally Chelsea finishes like the last words this thing looks like it gets sucked away and then after the session um Chelsea starts telling me everything that she saw which I've been telling you along the way but then it was so interesting and now I hadn't said anything about anything I saw she told me everything first and then later I explained what I saw so it was crazy when she said she saw 
the child in the quarantined room because we never talked about that and that she saw the mantis first and I saw the mantis first. And then at the end, she said, now it was really strange when I was closing up the space, a being jumped in on the last moment. Um, she's like, it wasn't anything bad. It just was strange. Some being jumped in at the end. And I was like, oh, a being jumped in on my end as well. What did yours look like? Completely different. Hers was like a squid octopus type of being. And she saw it right at the end, come in and then leave. And now after this, you know, it took a couple days of processing and integration. Overall, I feel way, way better. Um, but I also feel like I'm taking step by step, day by day in the sense of like really observing every single thing. Like, why do I like this or dislike it? Is this fucking rooted in some weird shit that happened in the fourth grade that I forgot about that I'm trying to prevent myself from ever feeling uh, any type of embarrassment or pain or rejection again? Because if that's the case, then I think I'm going to go forward and try this and push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, so I feel really good and I feel um, rejuvenated by it. You know, so I was driving home that night. It took a couple of days, though. For a couple of days, I really still felt a little bit not out of it, but just still like um, cocooned and hermit around it. But I feel good now. Um, I think it was now about five days ago. And um, after about the third day, I felt really good again. Now, when I was driving home from that uh, session, I was thinking about that squid being at the end because I was like, oh, my brother works in um, with like senior citizens and he works a lot of times with dementia patients. So sometimes when he's in one time he was in a dementia ward, he's seen things like this before. But one time when he was in a dementia ward, he had a really it was just very dark, scary energy. Um, not every dementia ward is like that. This one just happened to be um, having really bad vibes. And when he left, he said he saw a creature on top of the building that was a giant squid octopus type of being and I was like oh so when I was driving home I was in such clarity um I was like oh my brother said that in that dementia ward he saw this squid octopus being and then oh Anita thank you for the super chat for my contribution, for my continued contribution to and for the collective grace and absolute vulnerability and opening up and offering parts of yourself. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. You really are. I really wouldn't be able to be going through all of this, even the healing, this part of my healing journey without you guys and all of this, you know, um, the support the place to put this information, the place to share it, you know, it, I don't even think that I would be at this point of my healing journey right now, you know, and also I did a lot on my healing journey, but this was so deep. It was such a deep wound that I had been seeing my whole entire reality through the shadow of it. You know, and so that thing at the Conscious Life Expo, that's what Chelsea said when she was done. She said the thing that I saw at Conscious Life Expo on my left side, she said that was the shadow of that thing. She was like, there, there wasn't anything like that there. She was like, this is the shadow of that. That is the wrath of that. When that thing is angry and when it's wrathful, it is big like that. It is forceful like that. When it is taking the wheel, that shit is crazy and scary and big. But overall, it is a wounded child. Um, thank you for the gifts over here, too, on TikTok, guys. Sorry, I haven't been looking over here as much. Um, so with all of that, so then when I was going home, I was like, wow, so this squid being has come up multiple times. And I, then I just clicked in my head. I was like, oh, it's a bottom feeder. And not bottom feeder as an insult. You know, it's not an insult to be a shrimp. Um, so... Basically, the information that I kind of got in my head, I don't know, it wasn't confirmed by anything or anything, but I was like, oh, this squid energy comes up a lot when there's a, um, a recycling of energy and that thing that it took from me. So then what was crazy also is Chelsea said at one point I had a giant 
She said, I had a giant peach pit inside of my body. How crazy is that? And she said that right here where I felt them kind of like change the method. They had been using the vacuum, but then when they got to here, they couldn't. Um, she said that right here, there was two like stuck pieces. And then they told her to check my kidney meridians. And then, um, so we did a little bit more energy work at the end of the session separately from that. And, oh, thank you. Thank you, ne Nepo. Thanks for all the great work that you have been showing along the way. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, it's quickly how things can turn on their head so quickly. And that's the best once we merge on our soul path. It's so true. Oh, thank you over here too, Roxy. Um, so, you know, um, I think it's just important for us to kind of share these things. I would normally not, but because Brittany's video helped me so much and inspired me, I uh, feel like um, it was important too. Because, you know, for some people, seeing someone like me and not that I'm, you know, a perfectly healed anything, but just like a strong person, uh, to have all of that stuff going on too. people are like, Oh, maybe they feel a little bit normal, you know? Um, because I think, you know, a lot of times part of that protector in me has hidden all of drama and hidden all of this crazy shit, you know, and just lived life pretending that like, I didn't, deal with all of that stuff and I didn't have to live through all of those things so you know I think now I was like okay I guess you know I'm gonna share my experience because I know if I'm dealing with it a lot of people are dealing with it and because it can be so hidden even from ourselves all right well did I say Oh yeah, so that the squid is a bottom feeder. And then it was interesting, I was telling my brother about it to, today and he was like, oh, that's so interesting because he plays World of Warcraft. And he said, in World of Warcraft, the void creatures are um, squids. And then it was interesting, I was thinking about it and those white like veiled beings kind of looked like jellyfish actually. So it was interesting. Um, what else? I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Oh, one thing that I've realized since then is this video of Brittany on her YouTube or TikTok. It's on her YouTube and I put it in the description of this YouTube video also. And in the description, I have the link to um, the child, the inner child healing. So that's on Substack. Um, that's a replay from one of the classes that I did last year. So if you guys have stuff coming up and you want to do a little bit of inner child merging or healing or work, it's obviously going to be um, a little different than, you know, this whole experience that I just had. But you can do stuff to merge and help with your um your inner child. So that's at my sub set sub stack that's linked below. If you're on TikTok, it's linked. Um, just go to like, click on the sub stack. It'll be the most recent, the whole information more about this demons post is there. Um, also you guys, um, I have a couple things coming up. They are not everything's fully announced yet, but I'm going to be putting together a conference where I've curated the speakers for myself because I've gone to a lot of these conferences and oh you went to the class last year and it was great oh thank you Crystal um so coming up it's going to be this is going to be on May 4th and 5th it's not official um officially posted yet but these are the dates May 4th and 5th we're going to be doing an online conference that I'm going to be hosting and I'm going to have Nick Zai Marco J. Williams, Brittany Bento, Evan Nathaniel Grimm, Chelsea is one of the speakers, and also my sister is going to be doing a healing, a class on Reiki, and we are probably going to be raffling away for one person to win a Reiki certification from my sister. So that'll be um, levels one and two of Reiki. So it's going to be so exciting. Oh, and also Indigo Bruno. Bruno is going to be another one of the speakers. So I'm so, so, so excited. So, um, 
I think the tickets are going to be about 50 bucks and um, you'll get all the replays. So it's going to be eight lectures from your favorite people. This is going to be the first time a lot of them are giving an hour long lecture. So I'm really excited for this because this is like who I think the next generation of thought leaders are going to be. And I'm like, you know, the way that these conferences work, I enjoy them and I have fun, but they don't really work to bring kind of these new voices in. So I was like, well, if I, um, I have to be what I wish to see in the world. So make it myself. Well, we have a one and two day pass option. I think it'll just be all um, two day passes. Um, what they did for the last conference that was online, the one with the Dolans that I did, they, oh, Jess, Jessica's Reiki is amazing. My sister is really great at Reiki, guys. So if you guys don't follow her, the self-care librarian, she has great um, healing on Instagram. She has like little short videos on Instagram and then she has longer ones on YouTube. Um, yeah, so it'll be a two day pass and then you'll get access and you get all of the recordings. <laughs> um, a couple of other things coming up. I am speaking also June 21st at Castiac Lake. It's for Disclosure Fest. It's going to have a bunch of cool people. Leo King, Adam Apollo, um, Julia Cannon, Bashar, lots of cool people. I'll be speaking. And very, very, very last, um, I'm going to be speaking on a cruise. So in December, I don't have all the information yet, but in December... We are doing a Galactic Origins cruise. It's going to be me, Sarah Brexman Cosme. Um, I don't know who all the other the other um, speakers are, but we're going to be stopping in the Yucatan, in Honduras, and in Belize. So it's going to be a seven-day trip and conference. So if you are looking to do a um, nice vacation this winter, you might want to consider going on the cruise, especially if you're going to be traveling alone. The cruise would be really cool because you're going to be with all conference and like-minded people and you get to travel with me and Sarah Brexman and all these other um, speakers. And then we're going to get to go to sacred sites together and all the sacred sites we're going to be, um, the tour guides are going to be local to those sites. So we're going to get to, um, and it is a galactic origins. So there is going to be kind of like a little bit of an alien theme with these galactic sites. So, all right. Well, that is all. Thank you so much. Um, so if you guys are thinking about doing the cruise, save your money until I post the link because I don't have a link yet. And um, if you're going to get it, you better get it from my link. Because if I sell a certain number of tickets, then I get to bring Chelsea with me for free. So I don't even care about making any money from it. I just want to bring my friend. So if you are thinking about coming, don't you dare not use my link. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, let me know. Reach out to me if you need anything. Um, use the inner child healing meditation if you need it. And um, I will see you guys very, very 